In this lesson, you will learn about the concepts related to time zones. In order to do time zone calculations with confidence, you need to understand the concepts related to time zones. Can you remember the following that you studied in social sciences? The Earth continually rotates on its axis from west to east. It takes the Earth 60 minutes, or one hour to complete a rotation of 15 degrees. It takes the Earth 24 hours, or one day to complete a full rotation of 360 degrees. At the same time that the Earth rotates on its own axis, it also moves or revolves around the Sun. The Earth's path around the Sun is called its orbit. It takes the Earth 365 days, or one year, to orbit the Sun. Have you ever wondered why part of the world has daytime, while the other part has nighttime? As you saw, it takes 24 hours for the Earth to complete a full rotation on its axis. We call each 24-hour period one day, even though we experience both daytime and nighttime. At any moment, half of the world is in the daytime and half is in the nighttime. During daytime, your part of the Earth is facing the Sun. As the Earth rotates you move away from the Sun until eventually, the Sun is no longer visible. For you, this is now nighttime, but for the other side of the planet, day has just begun. In this lesson, we will take a closer look at the following concepts, hemisphere, latitude, and longitude. Also, the equator, the international date line, and seasons. So, let us start with the first concept of this lesson, which is hemisphere. The Earth is an example of a sphere as it is shaped round like a ball. Other examples of spheres include a soccer ball, a basketball, and a tennis ball. A hemisphere is half of a sphere. We use the word to describe one half of the Earth. Geographers have divided the planet into two sets of two hemispheres. These are the northern and southern hemispheres and the eastern and western hemispheres. We will now look at the following three concepts, namely latitude, longitude and the equator. The imaginary lines running horizontally, or east and west across a globe, or map, are called lines of latitude. Latitude is expressed in degrees and ranges from 0 degrees at the equator to 90 degrees at the poles, 90 degrees north for the North Pole, or 90 degrees south for the South Pole. Latitude indicates how far north or south of the equator a town or country is on the planet. The equator also divides the planet into a northern hemisphere and a southern hemisphere. Places north of the equator are part of the northern hemisphere while places south of the equator are in the southern hemisphere. The imaginary lines running vertically from north to south and south to north around the Earth are called lines of longitude or meridians. Longitude is expressed in degrees and ranges from 0 degrees at the prime meridian to 180 degrees west or east of the prime meridian. The lines of longitude measure how far east or west a town, city, or country is on the planet in relation to the prime meridian. The 0 degrees line of longitude and the 180 degrees line of longitude divides the planet into a western hemisphere and an eastern hemisphere. The western hemisphere lies west of 0 degrees longitude and east of 180 degrees longitude. It includes North America and South America and also portions of Africa, Europe, Antarctica and Asia. The eastern hemisphere lies east of 0 degrees longitude and west of 180 degrees longitude. It includes almost all of Europe, Africa, Antarctica and Asia and all of Australia. The next concept we will explore is the international date line. The 180 degrees line of longitude, on the opposite side of the Earth as the prime meridian, forms the international date line, also known as the IDL. This is an imaginary line that runs north-south through the Pacific Ocean from the North Pole to the South Pole. The IDL officially separates two different days on the calendar. In order to avoid the confusion of having different days in the same country, the international date line bends and goes zigzag around land masses such as island countries. 
Let us explore what happens when a new calendar day starts at the 180 degree line of longitude called the International Date Line by watching this time lapse video. As the Earth rotates on its axis, each time it reaches the 180 degrees line of longitude called the International Date Line, a new calendar day begins, separating two calendar days. So, Remember that when you travel east and you cross the international date line, you add a day, and when you travel west and cross the international date line, you subtract a day. Let me show you the impact of different calendar days on flights and passengers when traveling across the world. These passengers on an airplane will lose a day by flying from Monday back into Sunday. Or gain a day by flying from Sunday into Monday. The next concept is called seasons. As a year passes, regular changes occur in the weather. This cycle of weather changes is divided into four parts, known as the seasons. The four seasons are winter, spring, summer, and autumn. You might have heard that the seasons in the northern hemisphere are the opposite of those in the southern hemisphere. Let me show you why this is so. Seasons are a direct consequence of the Earth's tilted axis. So, at different parts of the Earth's orbit around the Sun, one hemisphere leans towards the Sun, while the other leans away. From June to August the Sun shines directly on the Northern Hemisphere and indirectly on the Southern Hemisphere. It is now summer, north of the equator, and winter, south of the equator. From September to November, the sun shines equally on the northern and southern hemispheres and days have equal amounts of daylight and darkness. It is now autumn season in the northern hemisphere and spring season in the southern hemisphere. From December to February, the sun shines directly on the southern hemisphere and indirectly on the northern hemisphere. It is now summer, south of the equator and winter, north of the equator. From March to May the sun shines equally on the southern and northern hemispheres and days have equal amounts of daylight and darkness. It is now spring season in the northern hemisphere and autumn season in the southern hemisphere. Let me show you a time lapse of the seasonal differences between the northern and southern hemispheres over the course of one year. You will notice that seasons are broken down into groupings of three months. These seasons are characterized by differences in temperature and the length of daylight. That brings us to the end of this lesson. Join me next time for Time Zone Concepts, Part 2.